What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animation tutorial. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create an animation simulating the movement of fluid inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I do want to note, this is something that came up in one of our live calls inside of the SketchUp Essentials community. And so the SketchUp Essentials community is the product where you can basically come to live calls and get your questions answered. I do have kind of a big announcement about that. And that is that I am rolling the SketchUp Essentials community into the SketchUp Essentials course. And so basically what that means is that means now as a part of the course, not only do you get access to all of the training contained inside of the course, so you get access to the full video training library, but you also get access to the live member calls. So um, you get access to live calls where you can ask your questions and get help on SketchUp, as well as access to the community forum where you can go and ask questions, interact with other members, other things like that. So if you are interested in learning more about SketchUp, getting your questions answered live, things like that, make sure to check this all out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. The, the question that came up was, let's say that we had something like this. There was basically two tanks of water, right? Or fluid, whatever kind of fluid you're using. How would you simulate or create an animation showing fluid flowing from one tank to the other tank, right? There's no fluid simulation or anything like that inside of SketchUp, but there is a way to do this. So I thought I'd kind of walk you through that. And so the first thing we want to do is we don't want to create this animation in x-ray mode. I mean, you could, but um, we don't really want to do that. Let's make this a little bit more um, controllable. So what I'm going to do first, and this is a tank model that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So you can download this and follow along. It's the SMH Global Poly Water Tank by Stuart M. So you can download this and follow along. But what I want to do first is I'm going to come in here and right now these have the default material applied to them, right? So if you click on this, there's no material applied to them. Well, what we want to do is we want to create a custom color instead that we can make transparent. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this to the outside of the group. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick a color. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to go with this color M00. And we're just going to apply it to the outside of our tank. We're also going to apply it to our pipe right here. and we're going to apply it to our other tank right here. Well, what that's gonna do is that now gives us a color that we can adjust. And so what we can do is we can tab or click on the edit tab. And what I wanna do is I just wanna turn the opacity of that material down. So notice how when I turn the opacity of that material down, that means that we can now see through it. And the cool thing about this is you can adjust this um, again and again. So if you wanted it like way down, you could kind of test that by dragging the opacity down. All right, so I had to go, so I had to go clean up some materials over here, but now we're good to go. And so basically, what we have in here, if we look at this, is we have a tank object right here that we can see through because it has this white material associated with it, right? If I was to come in here and I was to edit that white material, it would just look like this on the outside. But we've got a tank model in here, and then I also came in here and I just modeled out a blue material right here that's going to act as my fluid. And so basically what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to create an animation that shows this fluid going down, this fluid running across, and this fluid running up. And so one thing that I've found helpful is I have labeled my geometry in my outliner. So if I look at my outliner, notice how I've got my tank, my tank, and my pipe all labeled as pipe. Then I have my water over here labeled right here. And so what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to have kind of fine control over all of this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use section cuts in order to create an animation for our water. So what we're gonna do is basically, and I'm gonna turn my tanks off and my pipe off real quick, um, just to give you kind of an idea of what we're doing here. We're basically going to create a section cut inside each one of these objects or a pair of section cuts. And we're gonna animate a transition. So you can find section cuts over here on the left hand side of your page or if you go up to i believe it's tools section plane you can add it that way but basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the section cut in order to make the fluid look higher or lower so i'm going to add a section cut right here notice how i can move that up and down to make this look higher or lower and so i'm just going to name this one full so we can just rename this full right here, and then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm just gonna copy this down right here. Notice how I have these in a group, 
by the way. So these two section planes are in my water group. So that means that I can have multiple section planes active because remember if you just have section planes in your model, so if I was to click out of all of my groups, right, and I had two section planes, so let's say I had this one and this one, I can only have one section plane active in a group at a time. So you can't just put these all in your model, you have to put them inside of the individual objects. And what we're gonna be able to do is right click and click on active cut in order to cut through our model like this. So um, just for now, we're just gonna place these inside of the groups is all you need to know. But what we wanna do is we want our animation to show this water level going down and this water level going up. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to double click in here and basically the way the animation is going to work is at the very beginning we're going to start with this being our active cut right here. And so we're going to create a scene. So we're going to go to view, animation, add scene. And we're going to go ahead and save as a new style for right now. It's not that big of a deal. We're going to mess with that in a minute anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one scene where this is our active cut. Then we're going to have a second scene where this is our active cut. Notice how I can just right click on these and click on active cut in order to make that work. And so we're just going to update the second scene. So this is the active cut. We'll notice how now what that's going to do is that's going to basically animate the transition between these different cuts, right? So what we have is we have this water level going down. And notice because these section cuts are inside of these groups right here. And I may have to resave, yeah. And so just for a second, if I was to update this right here, and update this right here, notice how what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to animate the transition um, between these two areas. So we've got the first piece set up, which is this water level going down. Well, we also need to animate fluid coming across here. And we need to animate this fluid right here going up. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off for right now. And I'm just gonna update this scene because I really just wanna focus on animating the water moving across and the water moving up. So what I need is I need another section cut in this object right here. And so what I need is I need a section cut that's gonna animate the water moving across, and then I need a pair of section cuts animating the water moving up. So remember that we wanna set these section planes inside of our fluid objects. So I'm just gonna double click in here. I'm gonna tap the right arrow key in order to lock this up. And we're going to call this one empty. And then we'll use the move tool in copy mode and create a copy across. Maybe like right here. And we'll call this one full. And I should be doing a better job labeling these as I go. And so what we're gonna want in this situation, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off again, which is probably making it a little harder, but you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So um, what I'm gonna do for this object is for the first scene, I wanna have this section cut right here as the active cut, right? Because at the very beginning, we want this to look empty. And then in our second scene, we're gonna show the water flowing across. So for scene two, what we wanna do is we want to double click in here and we wanna set this to our active cut. And then we want to update this scene. So basically what we're doing is we're starting off with everything looking full. And I forgot to update this first scene. So do make sure that you update your scenes after you change your section cuts. But now I've got my scene one. Where this is full. I've got my scene two where this is going down and the fluid is coming across over here. So now we've got this set up, but we also want to set up a third scene where this is going to go up. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to double click inside of this water object and we're going to set a section plane right here and we'll call it full. I'm going to move it up 
just a little bit. Then we're gonna create a second plane down below. And we'll call that empty. And then somehow I got another plane in here, which we don't need, so we'll just call that empty. But we're gonna go back to scene one. And so for scene one, we wanna make sure that we've set this section cut to active right here so you can't see our water. So we wanna update this scene. Scene two, we also wanna make sure this one stays an active cut, right? So we're gonna update this because what we want is we want a scene where the water here goes down and the water here comes across. And so then we wanna add a third scene over here. And for the third scene, we want this to be our active cut. I know this isn't exactly the way that fluid works, but you can take these settings and you can apply them to whatever you want. But we wanna make sure that we've updated this. And so what we're gonna have then is we're gonna have an animation scene one where this is full. We're gonna have an animation scene two where this pipe is full and the water level is down. Then we're gonna have an animation scene three where this comes across right here. And so the problem with this, and it's not really a problem necessarily, is that the scene's a little bit weird because the water level has already gone down over here. And then we've got a third scene where the water level comes up right here. So what I wanna do is I just wanna add another section cut in here for scene two. So what we're gonna do as a part of scene two is we're gonna add another section cut. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm just gonna copy this to about halfway. Um, maybe a little bit higher, maybe something right here. And so then what I want is in scene one, I want this to be our active cut. In scene two, instead of going all the way to this bottom cut, I just wanna right click and make the second one our active cut. And then in scene three, I want this to be our active cut. And so make sure when you make this the active cut on scene two that you update this. Same thing over here. That's probably the trickiest thing about this is remembering to update things as you add them. But now I've got a scene one where the water starts to go down. I've got a scene two where this is like halfway down and the water's all the way across. And then I've got a scene three where the waters come up right here. And so now all I wanna do is I just wanna update all of this with the correct geometry turned on. All right, so I wanna change two things in this scene. The first thing is I wanna turn all of these objects on, right? And you could go through in your outliner and just turn them on individually like this and then right click and update your scene. But that gets kind of complicated because there's just a lot of clicking. What we wanna do instead is we wanna use the scene manager to update them all at once. So notice how this gives you options in here to save your hidden objects, other things like that. Well, what that means is that means that I can do a shift click to select multiple scenes and then I can come in here, turn all of these on and then right click and click on update scenes. But all we wanna update is we wanna update hidden objects. We don't wanna update our section planes or anything like that because it's gonna wipe out what we had done. So we're just gonna click on update right here. Well now, notice if you click across these, your tanks are on this entire time. So we only had to do that once instead of doing that multiple times. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna get rid of these section planes right here. And so all of these scenes have the same style associated with them, right? They all have this architectural design style one associated with them. Well, what that means is that means all I have to do is come into my style and click on edit. Then over here on the right hand side, there's an option for not showing section planes. So if I uncheck the box for section planes, now, and notice I didn't update this. So it's just resetting this. But now if I uncheck the box for section planes, those planes no longer show up even if the cuts do. So all I have to do is just come in here and click on the update style option in order to update that. Well now, because that style is applied across multiple different scenes like this, what that means is that means you don't have to apply it multiple times or change it multiple times because they're all applied or all of the scenes have that style applied to them. Now, let's go ahead. I'm gonna save my model. But if you click across these scenes, now you've got a first scene where this tank is full. You've got a second scene where the water level goes down and this runs across. Then you've got a third scene where the water runs up 
over here on the right hand side of the page. All right, so this is something we talked through live in one of our SketchUp calls inside of the SketchUp Essentials course. If you wanna check that out, get some great SketchUp training and also some live help, make sure to check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. I will also link to some other animation tutorials on this page as well. So as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.